Hello everyone, welcome back to a special series on 4G days that we begin today with the third generation Army officer Colonel Ashutosh Kale. Having proudly commanded the third Grenadiers, he is a patriot by heart and a writer by aspiration. In fact, his first book, Trist with Destiny, Abhikrama, a military political thriller, was very well received by readers and now he's all set to launch his third book titled Rambo. Welcome to 4G Days, sir. Thank you. Uh, so I had the chance to read Rambo and of course uh, Major Sudhir Kumar Walia's heroics form the core of this book and he was of course a distinguished officer who served in the elite nine para. He was also decorated with the Ashok Chakra. So what was it about his story that deeply resonated with you and inspired to write a whole narrative around his life and service? Uh, Sudhir Walia's story is a very inspirational story. It's very inspiring. Uh, he comes from a mediocre background, mm. but the fire in his belly and his acts of uh, courage and right. bravery and bravado that he displayed uh, are beyond the fathom of ordinary men, mm. people on the street, people sitting at home watching mm. television. And such stories need to be brought out for the nation. Right. And uh, heroes need to be uh, put in the limelight and given the recognition that they deserve. Absolutely. Um, this is what inspired me to write the story. How did you get to know or rather what sort of research went into writing this book? Of course you had to interact with his family, his peers. What sort of research went into writing this book? So especially in this case, uh, my all my books of course come with a lot of research. But in this case, uh, it was a very deep-rooted research hmm. uh, and a very intriguing process uh, because at the outset I had to get the entire story and the narrative hmm. uh, formatted in my head. Correct. Uh, and uh, you know, it's almost a 27, 28 hmm. year old story. Yeah. So there were only bits and parts of the story which were available and that to, uh, in a very hazy form. Right. Most of them were repeats. Hmm. So I had to get the entire narrative hmm. uh, straight out hmm. first. And once I got the entire narrative straight out first, then I had to go and look for parts which were missing to connect the dots. Correct. Now again, when you speak to people who about accounts which are 30 years hmm. old, obviously they will be different gaps in, so. and differences yeah. in yeah. their own opinions and in the way they explain yeah. it to you. So that's when my um, army background and my army training kicked into view and I had to kind of juxtapose those layers hmm. into the narrative that I was being given. I was lucky that I had served in the same places in uh, that I was writing yes. about or where the narration was all about. So I had to kind of recollect those days and pore over maps. Hmm. Um intriguing as the writing the book itself you know because it's so it much was intriguing and it. frustrating both <laughs> because at times you would come up with a roadblock or against a wall yeah. and you couldn't get through it yeah. all and then i had to leave that part out and move to the next like in an answer sheet and say I'll come back to this question <laughs> a little later of once course. i'm kind of done with of the rest of the overflow hmm. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. Uh, so your book also, it ends on a very reflective note, you know, where you talk about the responsibilities that we have as a nation towards our soldiers, especially the ones that we've lost. And so what sort of message do you want to convey to say our leaders, our policy makers and the audience in general? What can we do to serve the memory of our soldiers better? Um, so without sounding too much like a crusader, uh, because there is a movement on right now and not wanting to sound too political hmm. either. Uh, what I would say is, see, we have uh, two aspects of the coin. Hmm. One is the soldier that we have lost and the second is the soldiers who have retired. Yes. A nation owes a debt hmm. uh, to both the entities. Hmm. The strength of a nation is defined by its infrastructure, uh, by its financial position, you know, where it is heading, the GDP and all that. But there's also an element of the nation that is defined by its army, the strength yeah. of its army and its yes. armed forces are a very important part mm -hmm. of uh, this element. 
and while they might have tremendous amount of strength, they are also a lot which is very emotional and very fragile. Yes. They have sacrificed their youth and their life for the nation. Correct. Uh, some of them have sacrificed their limbs and they continue to live with honor in that state. Yes. Uh, they ask you for nothing, just that you recognize their uh, sacrifice mm. and uh, you give them their due. Yeah. They're not asking you your homes yeah. or your wealth. Like uh, the, this famous line, uh, First Blood series, where mm. he says, mm. just love us, let, let, let the nation just love us as yes. much as we love the nation. Yes, that's and a wonderful, uh, wonderful that's line. That's all that they want. Mm. Very nice. So also in this book, um, the thing that stood out to me the most was that <clears throat> of course there are a lot of action packed sequences, there's a lot happening in the book, but there are also very mellow, quiet and reflective moments over there. And the one that stood out to me the most was when Major Valia recalls his mother's voice. It hits you hard, you know, in those moments when you're reading the book and you come across uh, instances like this. So firstly, how as an author do you try to balance these emotions? And secondly, have you also witnessed these emotions while you were serving? So Max saw his life, a cinematic um, overflow which you see across. When in a battle or when in a situation, every minute you're not fighting. Yes. There are moments of solitude, there are moments of self-reflection. Hmm. A lot of this book comes from personal experience. Okay. 